In this chapter we're going to talk about layouts. The linear layout, the absolute layout, the table layout, the relative layout, the frame layout, and the scroll view. Number one in the list, the linear layout. We're not going to spend much time on it because it's all we've used so far, so you know this layout pretty well. You know that it can be horizontally or vertically oriented. You know it's very easy to use and very convenient. Let's jump on number two, the absolute layout. This layout will let you specify the exact location of each widget. So you have an example right here. This is the XML version and this is a graphical view where you see one, two, three, four buttons. Pixels, scaled inches and millimeter. Let's go back in the XML and indeed you see that for each button we specify exactly vertically and horizontally where the button should be. Of course, and I'm sure you guessed that already, unless you know what you're doing, you should not use such a layout. It does not handle rotation well, and even if you have a pretty good and pretty decent display when you're testing, the result can be very different and very ugly on a different set of devices because the screen resolution or the screen size is different. Now let's move on the table layout and I have also here an example. So this is the, the layout in XML and this is a graphical result in the layout tab. So, uh, so basically it's a table. You see individual cells by clicking on, clicking on them in the layout tab. So you see this is a cell, actually it's a text view, this is another cell, actually a text view. You can notice that there is some kind of border here and we are going to see how to do that. And uh, so let's look at uh, the XML code now. Going at the beginning and of course we have a, a table layout exactly like in, uh, in uh, HTML and uh, table rows, uh, that would be TR tags in uh, HTML and in each table rows you can have here we have two items which are text views if we look uh, maybe at the last one I think here there's only one item only one text view it's the quit item that is here and indeed yes on this uh, on this row there's only one item so you see that you don't necessarily need to mention all the different uh, cells if there's there's only one. You just specify the colon. Uh, it starts at zero, of course. Here we just say that there is a colon one, and it's the text is quit. And we just for the display here we've added some kind of pad padding. And you, uh, of course, we have one, two, three, four, five. We have six rows here, and we have. I will start from the end, from the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Yeah, six table rows. Uh, so containing, for most of them, text views, but could be containing pictures or any other uh, objects, including layouts. Why not? And and you see here, that's the trick to build this thin uh, border between two uh, table rows I have added a view with a, a layout height of two dip so that's pretty thin and uh, I specified also just to, for the display I specified a color so that's basically how to build table layouts once again if you're familiar with HTML there should be uh, really no difficulty here the next thing I'd like to show you is a relative layout and I have an example right here. So uh, we could have done that with a linear layout but I built uh, this layout, this display with uh, a relative layout. We have a type here, area, an input array and two buttons. So of course in a relative layout we set the position of each object based on the previous object. So let's have a look. Relative layout. 
here, fill parent, fill parent for the width and the height. And then we set our first text view, the type here, so it's going to go in the up left corner, right here. Okay, it's the first widget of the layout. Now we have an edit text. Okay, so this white zone here, it's an edit text. And what we say here uh, on this line, we, th we say that we want this edit text to be just below the text view. Okay, so just below the label, which is defined here. And then we have two buttons. We have an OK button and we have a Cancel button. We say that we want those buttons below uh, the entry, so this Edit Text widget. We say that we want this button to be aligned to the parent right, so this is set to true. We just for the display we have added uh, some margin, okay, 10 dips here. And then we have a second button. What we say here is that we want to align the top of this button to ID OK, so to the previous button created. And we want this button, so it's the cancel button, to be uh, on the left of the OK button. That's exactly what we have here. So once again, we have created our first widget here. We have created this widget just below this one. We have created this one aligned on the right just below this one and we have created this last one, this widget, which is a button, at the left of this one and with its top aligned to this one. So this is another way to build a layout and now let's have a look at our two last layouts. Let's start with the frame layout. A frame layout is a placeholder. It's really a placeholder on the screen. So you see that here, here I have an image view, so basically a picture, and it's actually an Android logo picture that I have uploaded previously in uh, the resource slash drawable directory. And I have a button. Uh, with the layout width of 124 pixels and the click me as its text. Those two widgets are within a frame layout which is itself in an absolute layout. So let's see what it looks like. So I have my absolute layout which is taking the entire screen. Then I have my frame layout, my placeholder and then I have my two widgets, and yes, they are over overlapping each other. All the widgets you're going to create within a frame layout will, will be put on the top of each other on the upper left corner of the frame layout. So, that is to say that usually you don't do that. In a frame layout, you have another layout. And then the last one, the scroll view. The scroll view is actually a special type of frame layout and it, it allows users to scroll through a list of objects that would occupy more space than the physical display. I have an example here. And let's see what we have. The first thing you notice is that we have a lot of widgets. That's crazy. One button, another button, a third button, an edit text, 300 pixels, layout height, that's a lot, that's a big widget. And then another button, and then another button, there is no way this can fit on a telephone screen. That's, wh that's why those widgets are included in a linear layout, and you see that this linear layout is itself embedded is in a scroll view. The other thing you can see that there is no way to really figure out what it will look like since here we, on the, we are in the layout tab we have no way to really scroll we see button 1, button 2, button 3 part of the uh, text edit view but that's it we cannot scroll we're not in the emulator well let's go there in the emulator here we are 
and we see button 1, 2, 3, part of the edit, view, edit text view and now I can use the wheel of my mouse to go down, I can also uh, use uh, a click with my mouse to simulate the use of my finger to go to move the screen up or move the screen down and now I can see button 4 and button 5, now I can see more widgets that's uh, the scroll view layout. That's it for this uh, overview of the layouts. Now you have to play with them a little bit and you'll see that you have everything you need to build pretty complex displays.